I bought this off of Amazon to put into our travel trailer. It has a power switch, a voltmeter, a 12 volt uh, outlet, and USB charging outlets. It comes on a nice panel. Problem I have is I really have nowhere to put this thing. Nowhere on the panel as it is. It'd be nice if I could put it up here, but I can't. I can't put it up here because there's not enough depth between that outer panel and this inner panel here. This was the base panel for this cabinet up here. It had a whole bunch of staples in it. I gently pried this thing up and pulled all the staples out. That thing came out of here. Probably need a light. There's a humongous rat's nest in here. Each one of these things comes off of that panel, like so. I potentially could mount them across here, except this voltmeter one. It doesn't have enough depth to screw on. This is like a half-inch piece of MDF or something. These are very thin panels. I'm thinking about putting the maybe the power switch here, the 12-volt outlet here, maybe the voltmeter and the USB charging one here. By the way, this panel now goes in and out with two little pieces of Velcro. They can pop it in and Velcro it. Once we put something on there, it's not going anywhere, and then it's easy to take out again. Ideally, I'd have a 1 and 1 8 inch hole saw to make these holes. I don't have that. My next size up is 1 and a quarter. So I did a test hole on this scrap piece, and it looks like it'll work. I'll just have to be careful when I tighten them down that I get them all aligned properly. Before I do any more damage in here and drill those holes out up there, I think I'm going to go figure out the wiring. Here's my test setup. So I didn't have red 14 gauge wire, but I have a whole spool of black. So these are my red positive wires. They're all interconnected here, similar to this ground side. This is a 12 volt power supply that I use to power a car stereo in my garage. I wire nutted my plus and minus to those two. That's minus, that's plus. Those wires all come down to these components. This one is not wired up yet because I may wire it independently for this USB one so it could be turned on by itself without turning all the other stuff on, but I don't know if I'm going to do that. I got one more tool out, this thing, so if this thing melts down, I can use this tool to fix the whole problem. Let's turn this guy on. This is the switch that came with that setup. It has a little blue light. And what's going on down here? We have 12.1 volts. That thing lights up. This one doesn't. It doesn't have the uh, extra blue stuff. So far it looks like I don't need this tool. I just hooked up a USB charging cable to my phone. How about that? It says it's charging. Oh, I put an inline fuse. Right now I have a 10 amp fuse in there. It's probably way overkill. In other words, I'm sure I could run a 15 if not more. But I may stick with that for a while. I don't know if I'll be able to run much off of this guy with a 10 amp fuse in there. I'll find out. I guess I'm ready to drill holes. Now I have two things plugged into that. My phone is charging and this is a tire pressure monitor. Looks like it's working. It's charging two things at once. I'm gonna let this sit here while I go drill holes to get a little burn-in time. No turning back. I'm gonna start drilling holes. One here, one here, here, and here. I know it's a little dark in here, sorry about that. Maybe this will help a little, very little. Uh, I'm not going to set up lighting out here. This thing's all closed up for storage. I double checked back here to make sure I'm not going to drill into anything on either side. Okay, make sure you do that. Got the pilot holes drilled. Next are inch and a quarter holes. I had a little learning curve. This first one I shoved and that uh, 
uh, cutting tool jammed into there and chunked it out pretty good. But I think I might have a brown sharpie somewhere. So I'll touch that up before I put the uh, outlets and switches in there. This has been sitting for a couple hours. That thing is fully charged. This thing is fully charged. Shore power is disconnected and the battery disconnect switch is off at the battery. I've identified this guy as my plus 12. This guy as negative. That's where I'm gonna hook all my that mess up. Here's how the wiring goes. This will get wired into the 12 volt incoming up in that cabinet. It comes over. It will get plugged into the center of the switch. The other silver terminal here will be this going out to this bundle and then these three wires go to the USB charger, the cigarette lighter adapter thing, and the voltmeter. This black wire will get wire nutted into the ground up in the cabinet. There's a ground on the switch which goes to this bundle here. I've got to take that up and those go to the three components. And a little update, there's my plus 12 and minus 12 wire netted on. I'm gonna have to remember I have this 10 amp fuse under here. This will be the switch. This one will be the cigarette lighter, 12 volt. That'll be the voltmeter, and that will be the USB charger. <laughs> Go turn the battery on now, hope for no smoke. Ready? 13.1 volts, got a little blue light for the switch. Let me see if I can plug something in to charge it up. I was gonna take these rubbers off because I thought this, oh, that's a little crooked, I'll have to straighten that out. I thought this was gonna be a little bright, but I think I'll leave the rubber covers on that covers that one up and maybe these won't be overwhelmingly bright at night although I suppose I can just shut it off. It's working. I haven't tested this yet. Well, that seemed to work. So for about $15, I think it was about that, I'll put a link down below in the description for this panel assembly that I bought. Uh, 15 bucks and about 800 bucks worth of labor. I don't know, that's kind of cool. I think the great thing is, I'm sure these are a standard size, so when they fail, <laughs> not if, when, I can just buy a replacement uh, individual doodad, whichever one fails. Hopefully they'll last a while. I just plugged into shore power, wanted to see what would happen over here, and sure enough, it's much higher voltage, isn't it? If you get a chance, go look at my video, installing this hardwired power watchdog unit.